Good morning. <laughs> Feels fantastic. It's um, it's just um, it's so good to be on the field training with players who are committed, and um, it's just a real privilege to be here. It's a, it's a great club. It's got a um, uh, a young uh, club, but it's got a great tradition already, and uh, I'm excited about the possibilities going forward. Mike, the news broke pretty late yesterday. Does that indicate how it, it developed within the club? How did you receive the news? Oh, well, basically it did. It happened very, very quickly. Um, I, I got a call, you know, uh, was I interested? I had a chat and I think that um, it's quite evident that looking from afar um, and obviously working in the state beforehand, knowing uh, the, the mechanisms within the club and knowing some of the people within the club, that it's, uh, it's one that's built on philosophies that I believe in. It's got, um, it's, it's not just about winning football games, it's doing it with a little bit of style, which I think has been done. Uh, very well in the past, um, and it's something that I'd uh, you know really look forward to continuing um, because we've got fans who demand it, and uh, and I think it's the identity of the club is winning, but also winning with style. How quickly can you make change? How quickly can you have an impact? Well, <laughs> look, the uh, my my perception is that there's one or two degrees off. That's all it is. Um, there's a few things that we'll try and uh, have an immediate. Uh, uh, impact on, um, but this is not about me, this is about the players. Um, the players um, are hurting with the position that they're in on the, on the table at the moment, but we're not going to concentrate on the table, we're going to concentrate on just Friday night's game and then to take it one day at a time. I know it's a cliche, I know it's not what you guys like to hear, that there's no magic wand. It's, uh, it's hard work out there, so we work hard, and um, I've just seen a training session there, and uh, there's no doubt in my mind these boys are committed. I suppose, Mike, in a sense, you're playing for your future position until the end of the season, so you're also playing for your position now. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's something that I come in with my eyes wide open, it's something I readily accept, um, and it's something that I think is the right decision as well, because, um, you know, the club has just gone from a, a very successful period to a less, sex, less successful period, and what we've got to do now is we've got to try and find our mojo, um, and if I can bring something that helps the, uh, the team uh, get back on track in terms of performance and, and winning games, then I'll be doing my part. But it is, uh, I can't say it strongly enough, it's a very much a team effort. I suppose your stint during the death row as the Gold Coast United <laughs> helped the course now because obviously you've been at the top level. Yeah, look, um, Gold Coast is in, is in, the, in the history, um, his, in the history books now. It's not many people that get offered the opportunity to come and coach the current champions. And I'm, uh, like I say, I'm privileged with that. Uh, opportunity, and it's one I, I intend to grab with both hands. Does that put you under any more pressure, Mike, given the expectations of, of this city and the fans of this club <coughs> and the cattle that you've got to work with? Um, look, pressure is something that you put on yourself. Um, I feel very comfortable working with footballers. I, um, you know, I, I have a, a vision of what we can achieve. I'll try and impart that to the players. Um, I expect um, certain values, which I think are already instilled within the club already. And you know those those things then are underpinned by the behaviours, and we've got to live those things every single day, um, whether it be from the youngest youth team player to the most senior professional player that we've got. Um, so pressure is only something that um, you know. Look at us; we're, we're out here, we're playing professional football, we're out uh, doing something that we love and we enjoy. What we need to do is just need to just make one or two degrees uh, changes uh, with regards to uh, match day performance, and this team will be back. Uh, Buzzing again, scoring goals, and um, playing some free-flowing football. Will they be back in the finals? Why not? Well, that's your job, I guess. You, you, watch I'm this. Sure. Watch this. Watch this space. What I know is that uh, these guys are winners. I've really admired from afar what they've achieved in the last couple of years, um, and they they just need to rediscover um, maybe the hunger, uh, how to get the kill again. Whatever it takes, we'll find a way. Um, but uh, you never say never say never to anything. And uh, one thing that I'm determined to do is to uh, not only um, uphold the um, you know the philosophy of the club and play with a certain style, is but to to build on it. And um, that's something that we'll be aiming to do every single day. You spoke to the leadership group. I understand they were consulted at some stage. Is that correct? Yeah, but there's a big part of the process and the way we work is this was a, a plan structure. It was a plan restructure and it was something we were, as part of the back re-ownership change, looking at ways we can strengthen the club. A big part of that is about respecting 
each other, we're respecting ourselves, we're respecting people in their positions. So for us, yes, uh, we contacted and spoke to May Smith, said there will be a change, uh, wanted his input in terms of the timing of the change. And I think the reality is there's no good time. You know, we knew Mike was the right man. There was no doubt about that in our opinion. When's the right time to do it now? The decision was as soon as possible. Did any of the players speak to Mike or did Mike have any conversation? No. No, I met the players for the first time this morning. I mean, obviously, I've my, my paths uh, crossed with some of them in the in the in, in the past, but um, you know, it's um, meet and greet this morning, first training session. And I'll, we'll just go on from here. Like I said, the focus right now is on Friday night's game, so that's the most important thing on the horizon. Right, I was obviously disappointed, um, but there's a little bit of a room going around that he approached you guys as well to say that perhaps more technical role or well, like I was saying before, one of the biggest things we do as a club is we've been analysing and, and looking at how we are and how we operate as an organisation. One of the roles that we identified that we needed is someone who could safeguard uh, our club philosophy in terms of our culture, our values, our football style, how we play, how we live, how we breathe. Now, Rado has been a big part of that since day one. Uh, Rado knows it, it's inherent, it's in his DNA. And really, as part of the restructure, we identified that we needed someone to operate in that role, to operate in that position, to really take the mantle and with our goals as a club and our goals as an organisation, not just in Brisbane, but through Bakri in Indonesia and their academy in Jakarta, to really drive the development of a curriculum, to drive the development of, a, I guess, a, a junior development program, the coaching methodology, the coaching philosophy, uh, so that we can really make a big impact on youth development in Queensland over the next two and three and four years. Uh, and promote football from grassroots all the way through to elite level and I think uh, most of the people here that know Rado, I think Mike knows Rado and the players will know that <coughs> he's very passionate about education, he's very passionate about development and, and really for him that's, that is where he's happiest. Sean, why didn't it work with, with Rado just not his, his thing to you know, be sort of, you know, a, a coach and to pump up the other players? I don't know. I really don't know where that came, comes into it. It's the biggest thing with Rado is he's someone who's been here for a long time. He's someone who knows our philosophy in our club. He's someone who's very intimate with our players and our, and our playing style. So, yeah, the decision through the off-season to bring him in uh, is one that we stand behind 100%. There's a big philosophy within the club of promoting from within, uh, from bringing people from not just within Brisbane Rural Football, from Queensland Football, and that's a big reason why we uh, why we ended up with Mike. Now, our feel is Rado is better suited as a technical director. Our feel is uh, he's proved it in the past with the players that he's brought in internationally that he, he's a very good scout. Uh, he's very, very good at uh, analysis and technical planning. So for us, it was a, a natural transition, a natural change. How, how did he take being sacked? He wasn't sacked. So uh, that's probably the biggest thing. Job anyway. Look, it's, it's something that we've been working with together. You know, the, a big part of the club and our organisation is we do have a very, very open communication policy internally. We don't tend to operate uh, without people having full understanding on, on what's going on and, and why. So, you know, Ryder was part of this process uh, right from the beginning, the same way he was part of the process <coughs> during the off-season we when we were considering our options. So, you know, for Ryder there's an element of disappointment. I think that's natural for, for anyone. It, his biggest thing was it was a matter of when, uh, not if. And for us, you know, we're very, very optimistic about the future for him and we know that he'll contribute a lot more as a TD. Thank you much for you. Um what will you take from Rado? You obviously know how well he knows the team, the players, the structure, everything else. The bigger part will he play in you moving in? Oh, we'll, we'll sit down and talk very soon, I'm sure. Um, he, he's, as Sean mentioned, he's been part of furniture from day one. Um, and that's a lot of uh, intellectual knowledge there, you know, and uh, it's a, something to tap into. Rado and I have uh, worked professionally together before um, in certain situations, and uh, I'm sure we'll work professionally very well together again. Mike, what can you do before Friday night just to tinker with something or just to get the boys back on track? Yeah, we just need to make an assessment of the uh, injuries that we've uh, picked up on the weekend. So we'll, we'll have a look at that. Uh, I'm going to go into a planning meeting with the other coaches soon just to get their thoughts and opinions. I've got a, uh, an idea in my head about how we might approach the game. Um, obviously Perth are um, travelling across the country. And um, that's always difficult for them. It's difficult for them when they travel. Uh, they seem to have heavy legs, um, and uh, we, you know we want to try and take advantage of that. So we we've got a plan in uh, place for them, but I need to get some opinions from around the table, and then we'll come up with the game plan for the day. But uh, it's a big opportunity for our players to uh, 
you know, to uh, light up the field tomorrow night, uh, or sorry, on Friday night, and we, that's what we're aiming to do. Well, is it fair to say you think there will be going a bit too wide lately? That's what you maybe approach it. A bit too wide. Yeah. Sean, you're, Sean, you're an analyst now. <laughs> um, look, we've got some very good attacking uh, players in this in this group of players, and I think that anybody that's played against the Roar in the last uh, number of seasons recognises that there's a threat from all over the field. Um, the pitch is as wide as it is. It's as long as it is, and we'll use whatever parts of that pitch that we need to to uh, to, to get the job done. If history shows us anything, it's that teams react reasonably swiftly to a, a coach change. Do you? What's your window then before you need to see dramatic results with these guys? Well, like I said earlier on, I don't think we're that far away. You know, uh, the stats will tell you. I'm not a big stats person, but the stats will tell you, you know, lots of shots on goal, lots of chances created, uh, lots of possession. Um, I explained to the players this morning that uh, this morning was about observation. Uh, tomorrow, I'll take the first session myself. Um, we'll work on our formation for the weekend and the players will just go out and play. Um, so uh, how that turns out, tune in on Friday night. Mike, how strict will you be on the boys from, you know, from day one? Will it be sort of similar to you know, Farina at, at Sydney? I'm not aware of uh, how, how strict he was or, or whatever, but um, look, you need to work within... A, you, players need to understand that there are boundaries. Um, as I mentioned before, you know, there's, there's values and behaviours and we've got to live those behaviours every single day. What I, what I am expecting is that there's a, a great intensity about our work at training uh, and also in the game. I'm looking for leadership from the senior players. Um, sometimes the, uh, the younger players need a, a little bit of a, uh, uh, a G up and uh, I'll be looking for the senior players to, I'll be encouraging them to do that. But we're all in it together. Um, age has no bearing on whether you play. It's all about the best person for the job. So as I said, there's some very good players here and um, it's a position uh, uh, I find myself in where you know you might need to uh, leave some players out who who deserve to probably be in the in the team. That's my decision. That's my job, and that's what we'll do. Um, but uh, it'll all, always be done with honesty and, and respect. Mike, how do you measure success at the end of the season? Will it be a matter of racking up so many wins, or will it be more of a I don't know feeling in the in the group? So when it comes to the end of this season, how will you justify? Well. I, uh, this, this club for the last two seasons has won the grand final, um, so they're you know, pretty lofty uh, heights to aim for, but um, somebody told me once that uh, you aim for the sky, I don't believe in that, I believe you aim beyond because the stars beyond the sky. So we're going to leave no stone unturned, we're going to try and be the best football club that we can be, but that's not what's going to happen then, it's going to what's happened every single day leading into that period of time. So our aim is to be the best that we can be on a daily basis and that hopefully will transform into the results that we want on the field. Um, but there's lots of work to be done, and uh, we started this morning, and I look forward to the challenges ahead. Last time I brought a coach in uh, mid-season, they won a couple of titles. Do you think you can deliver, <laughs> deliver that for them? Is that your...? Uh, well, look, um, as I said to the players this morning, I admire their um, qualities from afar. I believe that they've um, been very, very successful on the field and off the field. I mean, you know, you, you, you certainly notice a difference when, uh, when they, the players walk into, the, you know, they're well-dressed, uh, well-mannered. Um, these things are important. Um, you know, that's, that's, that kind of stuff is for you guys to write about. Um, what you can judge us on is the quality of our football and uh, the results will take care of itself. Do you have to think of any club in Australia, which is a bit of a club, obviously you want to come here as an assistant coach perhaps, after the demise of Gold Coast, was, was this the club that you I think is the number one, the nation's leader, is this one you wanted? 100%, without a doubt. Um, the, uh, the, the sad fact of being a football coach is that there are, in Australia there are only 10 positions, or in fact nine, with New Zealand across the ditch. Um, and the sad fact is that you, if you're not in one of those positions, you're waiting for the demise of uh, a colleague or a, a, you know, one of your peers. Um, but football's a, um, an interesting beast and you've got to grab that opportunity when it comes along uh, but Brisbane Raw uh, I've been on record saying before that I wouldn't just take any job when I left Gold Coast I wanted to find a job that fitted what I believed in and this is a this is a perfect fit. Sean is there a you know, like financial role is there some target that you're setting or you know the, as the reach when you're 
Well, look, as a, as a club, it's a bit like everything. It's not all results-based. A big part of it is you need to see how the team's performing on the field. But like Mike said, it, it comes down to how are the players developing, how is the group working. <coughs> In terms of our culture, our style, our philosophy, has it gotten stronger? Is there more to it? Are we uh, fluid? Are we quicker? Not just on the park, but off the park. And, and that's really how we'll sort of take a look at Mike. We'll see how he's fitting. We'll see how he's adapting. We'll see the strengths and weaknesses he's bringing. And we'll make a decision at the end of the season. Uh, I'm optimistic that it'll be a very, very long partnership. You had six, you spoke to six coaches, apparently you came down to the final two. What was the criteria for Mike? What sealed him? The biggest, the, thing, the biggest thing is the, the hunger and the passion. You know, Mike's, I think he's on record as saying he, he's been desperate for this opportunity. He had a taste of it last year at Gold Coast. He's had success with every team he's worked with. Um, now, for us, success as a club is something that it's part of our culture, it's part of our DNA. Now, when we take a look at it, Mike's biggest thing is that hunger and drive. You know, there was an opportunity there, and he's a man that I've got a lot of faith in that will do everything he can to take hold of this opportunity with both hands and deliver us what we're looking for. So if that's the case, why not permanently appoint him? It's a bit like everything in life. Sometimes you, you take a big step and sometimes you take a small step. You talked about getting some of the senior players to G up some of the junior players. I feel sorry for whoever you uh, appoint uh, Barisha to, but what's the latest on this injury? <laughs> He's with the medical staff this morning. Um, I'm led to believe he's very, very eager. He's, he's got, he's got a, a, an injured wing, so um, he's, he, I must admit he's in doubt at the moment from what I've heard. Um, but um, what I like in, um, in players is the fact that you've actually got to hold them back. He wants to play, and that's a great attribute. So uh, that's something that's very strong um, in his DNA. And it's, I think it um, exemplifies the kind of spirit that we need from players here. And we've got 